Right, okay, so we're going to uh, use the carbon pile tester um, to test this old uh, knackered battery. Uh, first off, I'm just going to run a quick test using the ring. It is a 720 EFB. Let's see what this comes back as. Um, we are literally bang on zero degrees in here. It's about minus one outside, so... Um, this is pretty much after a charge as well, so there we go. We are 477. So what I'm going to do as well when we do this test, I'm just going to stick this onto the starter and just see what it uh, effectively uh, drops to. So we need to get to about 360 amps. It's a 720, so we need to get at least 350 if we can. So let's keep an eye. Don't think I'm going to get all of these. I'll tell you what, let's zoom in up on here first. Just try and get that. So there we go. There we go. You've got a better view of it than I do. So we need to get to 360. As you can see, that is literally just falling off a cliff now. We couldn't even really get to the 360 amps. So I'm just going to make sure that's turned off all the way. I'm just going to give that a quick print. And then I will just do a quick zoom out. So, there you go, that failed the cranking. Showing there, voltage too low, you've got your little red X. And it dropped down to 8.94 volts um, on the ring tester. Um, I think it was probably something similar-ish on there. Um, I wasn't really paying too much attention to the gauges. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's I say just doing a test and comparing the two results. So with these, um I have had people say to me, Oh you but you can't do a load test, you need to put it under a load. Well if the battery's in the car, yes you can. You do the starter test and that will put it under its normal load um for starting. So if it passes a battery test and passes the starter test you've got a good battery. If it passes a battery test, fails the starter test, you will need to um, just quickly check the earths, which this machine can do. Um, check the earths. If the earths are good, then it's possible you do have a, a battery that's pretty much borderline. Um, these things are just good old fashioned, old school. Um, like you say, they do. It does get a bit warm. This one's only a fairly basic model. There's no fans on it. Um, so you can't really use it to do back to back, back to back, back to back. You've got to let it cool down. Whereas, you know, your digital ones are pretty, pretty accurate, really. So, again, that's providing you're using it on both. If you're using this, um, similar situation to what I'm doing right here, where you've got a battery on a on a bench, um, you do a test. If it was, say, for instance, if it was to pass this, but you weren't sure, you can then for Get out your load tester, shove it under a load, and you know that will give you um, another bit of um, evidence effectively. But yeah, as we saw, we literally, I think we only just about managed to peak at 360. Now, if this battery was in good nick, in theory, you should be able to crank it all the way up to you know there without any problems whatsoever. But because the battery's knackered, it literally just started to fall off a cliff. If this thing didn't sort to start to get too hot we could have just left that for a little bit longer and we'd have just seen the voltage falling off a cliff so yeah there we go there's just a little comparison between the uh, digital type and the old school type